Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Shadi Aqeel. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa has ratified and issued laws 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14 of 2018. Law 10 of 2018 stipulating the amending of Article 34 of the Sharia Court Procedures Law issued by Law Decree 26 of 1986. Law 11 of 2018 stipulated the amending of some provisions of Law Decree 15 of 1986 regulating tourism. Law 12 of 2018 stipulated the approval of the Uniform Law Code to combat commercial fraud in the Arabian Gulf Cooperation Council, the GCC states. Law 13 of 2018 stipulated the approval of Bahrain joining the agreement of administrative mutual assistance on tax matters in its amended form as per 2010 protocol signed by Bahrain in Paris on the 29th of June 2017 associated with this law whilst maintaining specific reservations. Law 14 of 2018 stipulated the approval of Bahrain joining the multilateral agreement between the relevant authorities regarding automatic exchanging of financial accountancy data signed by Bahrain on the 29th of June 2017 associated with this law. The Chief of Military Judiciary, Dr. Major General Yusuf Rashid Flefil, said that pursuant to Article 41 of the Constitution of the Kingdom of Bahrain and Article 84 of the Military Judiciary Law issued by Law Decree 34 of 2002, His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander, ratified the Court of Cassation ruling dated April 25th in the Terror Case 1 of 2017 by reducing the death penalty to a life in jail term against the below mentioned four convicts. Mubarak Adil Barak Mahanna, Fadl Sayyid Abbas Hassan Radi, Sayyid Alawi Hussein Alawi Hussein, Muhammad Abdul Hassan Ahmed Al Matrawi. The relatives of the convicts expressed their appreciation and gratitude to His Majesty the King for reducing the penalty. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander, gives us lessons in mercy and tolerance by commuting a final death sentence to a life in jail term. The relatives of the convicts expressed their appreciation and gratitude to His Majesty the King for his generous and humane gesture. My feelings are indescribable. His Majesty is so generous. His Majesty's decision made me very happy, made the whole family very happy. From what we've witnessed during the trials, the sentence is fair, but the king has a big heart. We also had the chance to visit them and to talk to them. Throughout the whole process, the military judiciary has provided all guarantees according to international standards and human rights, notably the provision of the right of defense and lawyers, fair trial and continuous contact with their families. The Institution for Human Rights attended all of the hearings and confirms that the fair trial uh, guarantees were afforded. With regard to torture, there were some allegations by some uh, uh, individuals that there were cases of torture and as a result, uh, we have uh, written to the chief uh, of military justice who offered us with three distinctive reports uh, uh, that deny any form of torture or other degrading or inhumane treatment. With regard to enforced disappearances, the National Institution for Human Rights confirms that there is no case of enforced disappearances in the Kingdom of Bahrain where all of the uh, uh, individuals uh, in this case uh, had the opportunity to contact their families and lawyers and uh, visits were granted regularly. I attended the hearings throughout the trial. The first uh, hearings at the High Military Court and also at the uh, Supreme Military Court and the Cassation Court. The hearings are all uh, fair and just and also there were um, speedy trials but at the same time the guarantees for all the defendants, um, they were given all their legal rights. The, the, the defendants who did not have any lawyers, they were appointed lawyers by the court and the lawyers submitted their final arguments and they summoned witnesses and I think the Cassation Court, the military Cassation Court is one of the best courts in Bahrain and they were helping us throughout the whole trial as a media presence.
Trials witnessed a large presence by various local and international media agencies, which were given the opportunity to attend the hearings and the continuous coverage of the proceedings and the dialogue with the families of the convicted and the defense lawyers on a continuous basis. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's humanitarian gesture to commute a final fair death sentence to life behind bars continues to amaze us with his eyes of mercy and the sympathy he has for all his children. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul Ghaffour. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa yesterday held his weekly majlis at Rafah Palace. Members of the royal family, senior government officials, members of the Shura Council and Council of Representatives, members of municipal councils, religious and community leaders, journalists and diplomats attended the majlis. His Royal Highness welcomed the broad range of visitors at the weekly majlis, which demonstrates Bahrain's commitment to rooted traditions and values that are underpinned by His Majesty's aspirations to maintain a strong bond amongst Bahrain society. The Majlis visitors extended their appreciation and gratitude to His Royal Highness for hosting the Majlis and emphasized the important role he plays in advancing sustainable development to guarantee prosperity for the people of Bahrain. On behalf of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa this evening attended the opening ceremony of the 26th Annual Heritage Festival. The festival, organized by Bahrain Authority for Cultural Antiquities and based on the theme of memory of Maharaq, was held at the Heritage Village near Arad Fort. His Highness Sheikh Isa expressed pleasure at attending the 26th Heritage Festival on behalf of His Majesty King Hamid adding that this annual festival, which is actively supported by His Majesty the King, reflects a commitment to showcasing authentic Bahraini culture and preserving it for future generations. His Highness Sheikh Isa welcomed the commemoration of the city of Maharaq's rich heritage at this year's festival, which coincides with the celebration of Maharaq as the capital of Islamic culture 2018. 
His Highness went on to note the vital cultural contribution Maharak has made throughout Bahrain's history and praised the festival's organizers for their demonstration of the intellectual, literary and scientific impact the city has had. His Highness then toured the festival accompanied by the President of Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, the BACA, Sheikh Hamay bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, and was briefed on the festival's program and events which focus on important aspects of Maharaq's history in a number of areas including literature, art, sports and architecture. His Highness was also briefed on the Bahrain National Museum's collection of Bahraini women's fashion and toured the local market and cafes. Later, His Highness Sheikh Isa observed folk dances and games and was told about the different workshops being held throughout the festival. His Highness praised BA, rather BACA for a successful organization of the festival and wished the authority continued success in their work to highlight the cultural impact of Bahrain. For her part, Sheikh Hameh extended her thanks to His Majesty the King for his role in enhancing Bahrain's heritage and for his ongoing patronage of the annual Heritage Festival. She also expressed appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Isa for opening the 26th Annual Heritage Festival on behalf of His Majesty the King. She noted that this year's Heritage Festival program highlights some of the many historical achievements and cultural features of Bahrain. She concluded by noting that Bahrain's heritage extending from the civilization of Dilmun until today represents a great source of pride to the kingdom's citizens. Upon the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to begin working on the detailed plans of the first stage of the waterfront from Jufair and King Faisal Corniche, the Urban Planning and Development Authority organized the second workshop on adopting the waterfront in King Faisal Corniche. The CEO of the Urban Planning and Development Authority, Sheikh Nayef bin Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, noted the importance of creating a partnership between the private and public sectors in a sustainable development operation, stating that the aim of the second workshop is to con rather to coordinate efforts in regards to the project's infrastructure services. During the workshop, the project plan was viewed, which was prepared as the participation of the private and public sectors represented by the, rather the municipality affairs. 
The 2018 Gulf International Exhibition for Building Interior Design and Furniture continued for the last day at the Bahrain International Exhibition and Convention Center. More in this report with Shog Mohammed. Interiors 2018 is a dedicated event for luxury, creative and designer projects for the home or commercial spaces, providing exhibitors with a unique opportunity for their products. Visitors from across the GCC can enjoy a range of networking opportunities to meet with specialist interiors professionals and experience the creativity of interiors. On a small scale, it's an opportunity for, for companies, both Bahraini and foreign companies interested in the market here, to showcase their, uh, uh, their abilities uh, and their products in the context of, uh, of, of property development uh, and construction uh, in Bahrain and more widely. But at the same time, because, as you say, it is such a such a, a big and powerful exhibition. It draws a lot more people in, which allows the country to showcase uh, the way in which it's developing in terms of infrastructure as well as in terms of uh, of, of, of property development. Factually, it's very significant because it presents what Bahrain is offering in this field. And it's quite interesting because people are more than interested to buy in this. And the exhibition, by introducing most of the companies and whatever Bahrain is offering, is very significant. This show provides a unique platform for local and international retailers, interior designers, architects and contractors to showcase their latest luxury and designer products and innovations. We join uh, forces with uh, the Expo for the last uh, five years as a sponsor, main sponsor in the event. Uh, but we participate for more than 10 years now. Uh, we find it very uh, useful for our customers to get the information about the latest product and uh, the new uh, product that we launch. Uh, for the last uh, three years, every year, we promise our customer with a new product. And uh, today we uh, deliver that uh, to Best Brilliance. It's a unique product for interior use uh, and the platform of the Expo, Bahrain Expo, is a fantastic event for that. Uh, we are always happy to participate in this exhibition. This is maybe our 20th time. Uh, every year we are part of this exhibition and we have big support to the direction of the government and His Highness, the Royal Highness uh, Prince Khalifa. Today we are concentrating on green energy. Uh, this is our own brand, our Bahraini brand. This is the first brand in Bahrain in the lighting segment. Uh, green energy is the thing of the future in line with the government's directive for energy conservation. We have uh, launched our own brand. Specialized expos provide opportunities to highlight Bahrain's promising opportunities in various sectors and shed light on its advanced infrastructure that encourages investors to enter the Bahraini market with confidence and success. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Shogh Mohammed.